everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do this little circle cluster square. As always, there are timestamps in the description box. So I know I tend to have a little chat before I get going and show you how to do it because I like to tell you about the yarn and the hook sizes and just a bit of background information. But in my description box, if you click, there's like a little arrow. If you click that, it expands the um, description box below where I've got all my links and everything. In there are timestamps. So you'll see if you're on a computer or laptop, I don't think they work on a phone, but I don't know, you'd have to give it a try. There are little numbers there, which if you click them will take you to a certain part instantly. So you can cut out all of my waffle in the beginning. So if you wanna see how you start, you can click that timestamp. If you wanna see how you do row two, row three, or if you just want to jump straight to how I've joined them, the timestamps are in the description. So feel free to click them and then you can cut out all this nonsense and just jump straight to the sections of the video that you want to watch. Now I've knocked up a tiny little sample for you. I haven't quite finished the border yet and obviously it needs a bit of blocking, but I wanted to show you how this Hayfield Spirit, this is the double knit version. Um, obviously I have used some of this ball already so it's looking quite sad and depressing. However, I wanted to show you how the colorway works up when you are doing sort of circle formations. So you can see it gives this really pretty varied sort of color change throughout the circles you can arrange them however you want you could have um sort of all the pink circles so i sort of make all my circles first before squaring them off you can make all the pink ones and have them sort of blending all the pink up here blending across to the browns and then ending on this sort of really cool sort of charcoal gray and sort of purpley plum color here or you could have them set out how I've got them set out. This is literally how they came out of the ball. Um, so yeah, I've been using the Hayfield Spirit double knitting for these circles and a four millimeter hook. And I have joined them with the sort of outside final squaring off and the joining using the Shape Years Color Crafter in shade, I'm not even gonna attempt to pronounce it. <laughs> shade that <laughs> which is a really pretty slightly gray toned creamy beigey off-white looks different depending on what yarn you put it next to but these two together go beautifully for quite a nice muted little bit girly but not too girly sort of colorway so i wanted to show you this so you can kind of get an idea of how it looks on a larger scale because sometimes you can't always tell from just a single square. Now this pattern is very closely related to two of my other videos. Firstly, it is related to a granny circle in a square because as I've mentioned, I am a sucker for a circle in a square. It really makes the circle pop, which is just a slightly different dimension really than your average granny square. And it is very closely related to my rainbow hexagon blanket. So it's the same sort of cluster technique as I used for my stash busting rainbow hexagon blanket. If you haven't seen that video, please do check it out. Um, that uses a big chunky yarn, it's really quick to grow. And that also covers the sort of arranging the colors how you want them to be before joining. You can sort of see it more in that blanket. So enough waffle from me. Let's begin. So I'm gonna be starting my cluster circle or using a magic ring. If you don't know how to do a magic ring, I have a video for that. It's in the description below, box below. Or if you just don't like doing the magic ring, then you can chain, say, four or five, join to your first chain with a slip knot to create your little circle to work into. But I'm gonna be using the magic ring because I love it and it's great. <laughs> So with your magic ring, you're going to chain two. Oops, tail's caught up. Then you're going to pop a double crochet into the ring. Chain two. Now we're going to pop a double crochet two together into this ring. 
So again, if you don't know how to do it, I do have a video, but I will show you here anyway. So you yarn over, go into the center, yarn over at the back, come through, three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two, stop. So you've got half finished stitch. Yarn over, go back into the ring, yarn over, come back through, yarn over, pull through two, stop. Now you've got two half finished stitches hanging from your hook. So to bring them together, yarn over and pull through all the loops on your hook. And that is a double crochet, two together. Chain two, double crochet, two together. So yarn over, go in, stop. So don't complete your stitch. Stop, don't complete your stitch. You've got two, pull them together. Chain two, double crochet two together into the center ring. Chain two, double crochet two together. Chain two. Double crochet, two together. Chain two. And you will have six little segments, at which point you can pull your magic ring closed, like so, and then slip stitch into this first chain two space here. Just go ahead and just slip stitch to join. So you've got a little tiny circle with six little sections in it. Round two, chain two, and you're going to put a double crochet two together into this exact same space. So just like before. chain two, and then we're going to do a double crochet three together back into this same place so where you just where you just did your last stitches. So double crochet three together, same principle as double crochet two together, you want to end up with three half finished stitches on your hook before you draw them together. So I'll talk you through, so yarn over, go in, yarn over, pull through two, stop, yarn over, go in, Yarn over at the back, come through, yarn over, pull through two, stop. And one more time, go into the ring, yarn over, pull through two, stop. So you've got three half finished double crochets hanging from your hook. So to bring them together, yarn over and pull through all the loops on your hook. Chain two. And into the next chain space, you're going to do double crochet three together, chain two, double crochet three together, all into that same space. chain two and you're going to repeat that in every chain space all the way around your circle so chain two three double crochet together chain two three double crochet together chain two so you're going to have in each chain space double crochet three together chain two double crochet three together chain two so all the way around double crochet three together chain two, double crochet three together, chain two, all the way around.
when you come to the end of the round, don't forget that chain two and then slip stitch into this chain two space over here. So you should have sets of double crochet three together, chain two, double crochet three together with chain twos in between them. Round three, chain two, and just like before, do a double crochet two together initially into this space. Chain one, and then into the same space, double crochet three together. Chain one, and then into the next chain space, double crochet three together, chain one, double crochet three together, chain one. And you're going to do that all the way around into every chain two space. So I'm just finishing up my last sort of set of double crochet three together, chain one. Double crochet three together, chain ones. So to finish off, you do your final chain one and then again slip stitch into the chain one space over here. So you're not going into any of these clusters, you're going straight into the space, which makes life super duper easy. So let's just take a moment to appreciate how pretty <laughs> this Hayfield spirit is, the colour changes are quite soft and it's sort of muted girly without being too girly. I really like it. This works for any yarn, any weight, just use the correct hook size that will be recommended on the yarn ball. So I've finished using my colour, now I'm going to be squaring off. So I'm just going to chain one, snip my yarn, leave a nice decent long end because you'll want that for weaving in. Then I pull it up and through and then rather than have it sort of flopping around at the top here which I find incredibly frustrating I'm just going to pop my hook under here grab that yarn and just pull it so it's hanging around at the back instead let it flop down there and then it's not in your way when you're trying to crochet so I've got my sort of two pull my little ring tight two yarn ends which when you're done weave them in and out with a needle and thread so that they're securely tucked away. And now I'm going to bring in the colour crafter so we can square off this circle. Alrighty, so for squaring off your little cluster circle here, pop your hook into the chain one space between any one of these stitches. It doesn't matter, pop it wherever you would like. And then I'm going to join my yarn at the back so I'm just going to go ahead and make a slip knot and pop that on my hook. Now hopefully this colour will show up nicely. So I'm just going to pull this so it's at the front of my work. And you're going to chain four. And pull it back a little bit so that knot disappears. Then you are going to do treble crochet. So a treble crochet is you yarn over twice before you go into anything. So I've got two yarn overs, go into that chain one space, catch the yarn at the back and come through. You'll have four loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That's your first treble made. 
this chain four counts as a mock stitch. So you only need that extra one treble in the corner. So now we are going to chain three and pop two more trebles into the same chain one space. So yarn over twice, go into the chain one space, yarn over at the back, come back through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. One more time, yarn over twice, go into that chain one space, yarn over at the back, you'll have four loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, all the way until you get back up to the top. And that is your first corner made. Chain one, and then into the next chain one space, you're going to put two double crochets. So just straight up normal double crochets, just two of them. Chain one, And then into the next chain one space, we're going to put two half double crochets. So you yarn over, go into the chain one space, come back through, you'll have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all, it's a half double crochet. So you want two of those. Chain one. And then the next chain one space, two single crochets. chain one and now we're going to do the reverse and work backwards up to the tool stitches again. So two half double crochets into the next chain one space, chain one, two double crochets into the next chain one space. Chain one, and then you're back to a corner, so that's two trebles, chain three, two trebles, all into the same chain one space. So you're going to repeat this around the remaining three sides. So from the corner, which are two trebles, chain three, two trebles, chain one, two doubles, chain one, two half doubles, chain one, two single crochets, chain one, and work your way back up again, two half doubles, chain one, two double crochet, chain one, and you're back to the corner, which is two trebles, chain three, two trebles, all into the same space. So you carry on, I will actually write <laughs> the sequence, because I know that's a lot to remember, but basically you're working from tall stitches to short, and then back up to tall again, to give you a straight edge. And I'll meet you back here in just a moment. So when you've got to your last couple of stitches, chain one and slip stitch to the top of your initial chain four. Chain one, cut your yarn. Again, leave a decent long tail for weaving in, pull up, and that is your first square complete. Now, I like to either join as I go or do a continuous join as I go. So this sample here, I used, I joined, sorry, using the continuous join as you go technique. I've got a video to that. Um, it's exactly the same principle as in that uh, continuous join as you go video, except you're obviously going to be doing different stitches because it's not all just a flat granny square, but the principle is exactly the same. And that is how I joined this particular sample using continuous join as you go. 
but not everybody likes that. Some people have been quite intimidated by it. So I'm going to show you now how you can join as you go and be a bit more traditional with it. Obviously, you can sew your squares together however you want, but I'm going to show you how to join as you go. Okay, so to join as you go, I'm going to use a contrasting colour just so you can see exactly where I'm putting the stitches in relation to the joining. So I'm going to be using another shade of Colour Craft, which is a beautiful blue called that. <laughs> Alphen? There you go, I attempted to say that one. So this blue is just as a contrast so you can see exactly how I'm joining. So with my blue, I'm going to join. I'm now ready to square off my second circle. So I'm going to join it to my cream one. So go ahead and chain four, just like you did before, and pop in a treble. So I'm starting on a corner. So now you're going to chain one and slip stitch to this corresponding side, corner, side, corner, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, over here. So I'm just going to pop my hook into the chain three space, catch the yarn at the back, come through the chain three space and through the loop on my hook. And then to finish off, chain one. And then working straight back into my brown circle over here, I'm going to pop two trebles to finish the corner. So you can see you've joined at that corner point. Now, instead of chaining one, I'm going to immediately slip stitch. So substitute out the chains for slip stitches. And I'm immediately going to slip stitch into this space between the stitches into the chain one space. So just pop your hook in, slip stitch like that. Then I'm going to pop my two double crochets into my brown circle. And you just work your way along as normal, but you slip stitch instead of a chain one. So I'm just going to slip stitch into the next space and then work the next set, which is Half double crochet. Oops. Slip stitch instead of a chain one. Two single crochet. Slip stitch. Two half doubles. Hopefully I'm not going too quickly on the slip stitches. Let me see if I can just show you really simply how I'm going in, I'm just popping my hook straight into that space, catching the yarn at the back, coming through that space and through the loop on my hook. And then I'm just working, the yarn will kind of pull over, but you're just working straight into the next stitches. It's also totally up to you if you want to slip stitch the other way round, rather than going, I mean, when you pull it, you can't really tell, but rather than going, I've been doing it into the back, so I've been sort of working into the back. You can do it into the front if you want to. You can go in via the front and slip stitch that way. Totally up to you. But whichever way you do it, just do it the same <laughs> the whole way along. So I'm back to my corner already. And instead of chaining three, I'm gonna chain one slip stitch, I'm going to go into the front again because that's what I did for the last one, slip stitch, chain one and finish the corner. And then you would continue squaring off the rest all the way along. So chain one, two double crochet, chain one, to half doubles, etc., etc., all the way around. You only substitute out the chains for slip stitches when you're joining on the side. So here, that now you can see quite easily actually the difference between going into the back versus going in by the front. 
You can notice it on this because obviously I've used a separate color, but when joining the two same colors, you just, you cannot see. You can't tell which way I did it, whether I went front or back. I can't even tell which way I did it. <laughs> so completely your call, whichever way round you go, just do the same the whole way along. That's how it looks on the back, nice and flat. And that's just another alternative if you didn't want to do a continuous join as you go, as to how you can join as you go. Each time you want to square off, you can just join it at whatever point. So I hope that helped. I hope you like your cluster circles in squares. They look really effective in a rainbow yarn or solid color yarns. Go wild, do what you want. It's yours, make it your own. And at some point I will weave in my ends and I will finish this border. And at some point in the future when I've finished this border and got something decent to show you, I can show you exactly how I did this too. So I hope to see you again soon on my channel for yet another crochet tutorial. Happy crocheting!